Hi everyone, let's go ahead and get started with the customer churn modeling with the multi-layer perceptron. We are going to introduce first of all the deep learning and how you can use the Keras and the TensorFlow. But before that, you need to learn what is artificial neural network. Artificial neural network is a supervised machine learning which is built with a large number of the neurons. So what are the neurons? Neurons are something like here, in, this is the artificial neurons and these are the actual neurons. So the neural network is actually motivated by human nervous system. So like in our brain, these neurons are found there. Something like that, the scientist actually tried to build neural network. So this is real neural network which we use in our deep learning there. And this one is actually real one and this one is the artificial one. Then this is just a single neuron. Then how do we build multi-layer perceptron? So this single neuron also known as linear threshold unit or you can say that it is just a single layer neuron there. And if you want to build their multi-layer perceptron, then in that case, you need to build here a shallow neural network or a deep neural network. So in case of the multi-layer perceptron, we have two types of perceptron, shallow neural network and deep neural network. In a shallow neural network, we have only one hidden layer, but in case of the deep neural network, we have a multiple hidden layer. In all case of these neural network, we have one input layer and one output layer. Now it depends on your problem statement, how many number of input layer you, how many number of input neurons you want and how many output neurons you want there. It is completely dependent on the type of problem. Thereafter, we need to learn that the type of the neural network which we have seen here, shallow and the deep neural network, there are some pros and cons with the silo and deep neural network. Silo neural network is easy to build and easy to learn. This one is complex and complicated and difficult to learn and build. But this silo neural network cannot learn complex pattern in your data. Deep neural network can learn complex pattern. All right, so if you see there in the first image, there is activation function. So suppose that this input comes there, it gets multiplied by a weight and then weight and input comes to the a function where in this function, additional term bias is gets added. After multiplying by input and the weights together, adding the bias, then there is a function. And this function is known as activation function. In general, this activation function is a non-linear activation function so that your neural network can learn complex network. So these are the activation function in neural network. We use sigmoid, TANH, ReLU, leaky ReLU, max out and ELU. So these are the activation function which we use there. So what's the back propagation? We have seen that the feed forward neural network in the feed forward neural network, what happens, you give the input and then it input moves in forward direction. Input gets multiplied by the weight and then, then it reaches to the another layer. And if you have a multiple layer, then it reaches to the another layer and so on. So that is known as the forward pass or feed forward network. But in actual sense or in actual network, what happened? Whenever you get there the output and output doesn't meet your criteria, then there is the error. Suppose that for this particular input, you have output 1, but the predicted output is 0 0.52. That means there is the error. So when there is error, your neural network goes back and that is known as a backward propagation. So when it goes back, then it go, it goes back and it tells other neural other neural network layers that modify your weight so that we can adjust y hat and this y hat should match a true value of y there. All right, so that's how the back propagation happened. Let's go ahead and see how you can do the artificial neural network with the TensorFlow. So these are the two major library, TensorFlow and the Keras, which we use there to build our neural network. 
all right so it's very easy to install the tensorflow although we are already using here we are already using here a colab so you don't need to install the tensorflow and this keras is high level library which is built for the uh, this keras is high level library which is built for the tensorflow and it makes a neural network making a neural network is very simple and easy there are some apis from the tensorflow and the keras which you can just import in your uh, in your program and you can start writing your code there so these are the some steps to build your neural network like you need to do the data prepar preparation data preprocessing then you need to add here the input layer and then you need to do the random weights initialization add hidden layer select optimizers loss and the performance metrics compile the model and then use model.fit to train the model and then finally you can do the evaluation of your model and then adjust the optimization parameter or model if it is needed so all these process we will be doing but before we need but but before that we need to see our data set so our data set is hosted at github.com lakshmi merit all csv ml data file download you need to click on that then it will lead you to here a git file in this git file we are going to use their customer churn modeling there are many more data samples are available there if you want to try out these samples you can go ahead and try out those samples but right now we are going to try out here customer churn modeling dot csv file once you come to this and then you need to click on here raw file once you click on raw then it will lead you to here then thereafter it will give you there a link i need to just go back here and see it here i have just exited my full screen mode so that i can copy this particular link from there and then you can simply you know paste that link here so this particular link we are going to use for our data all right let's go ahead and import the necessary libraries but before that we need to set here a runtime you need to click on runtime then change runtime thereafter you need to select here gpu so we uh, so 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 that we can train our model on gpu so this gpu is offered by google it is free of cost it does not cost you anything if you use google colab all right so once all these things are done let's go ahead and import all the necessary libraries so i import here import numpy as np and then i write here all right i had actually connected my all right thereafter previously i had connected there my cpu but now i have changed it to gpu so it's going to work with gpu right now all right so we have import numpy and then you can write here the import pandas as pd thereafter you need to write here import seaborn as sns and then import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt so these are the some uh, basic libraries which we use for our data analysis and the data load we have a link of our data here we can simply just copy it one more time and now we are going to say that here data set is equal to the pd dot read underscore csv so the pd dot read csv is going to read this file from the internet directly and then it will place this file inside this data set now if you see this data set it will be having here a multiple folder it has the row number customer id surname credit score geography all these are the input features and based on these input feature we need to predict here this particular exited whether the customer has exited the bank or not so if exit is one that means customer has left the bank otherwise customer is with the bank all right so now you see there we need to use here all these columns all these columns but we don't want to use first three columns and the last one column because this last one column is actually the target column so obviously in the input we don't use the target column so for that we are going to use here i lock this is uh, i lock and then we are going to select all rows this says that and then for the column 1 2 and 3 column we want to 
three column we want to discard so i write here three and last one column i want to discard there so i write there minus one once that is done now you see that you will be getting here only input data all right so the target data has been gone now and now i can say that this is equal to x there all right so this one is equal to x there and thereafter i'm gonna say that here is the y and the y is obviously it is the data set and then we have this one there now we have got our two data frame x and y x is the input feature and y is the output feature let's go ahead and visualize our y so sns dot count plot and then i write here x equal to y in that i'll be getting that how many values are there for the y so that means y is exited it says that there are around 2000 customers who exited the bank but there are almost 8000 customer who are still with the bank so this says that we have currently imbalanced data set but that's okay currently that is not the problem for us right now all right so once we have all these things let's go ahead and see here a pair plot so i'm going to just do here the sns dot pair plot so the, with the pair plot we will be seeing here all these uh, with the pair plot we will be seeing uh, uh, the relations between all the numerical data so i write here sns dot pair plot and then there is the data set in fact we don't want the data set we just want to see between the x there so i'm just going to stop it and then i write here x there let's go ahead and run it one more time so that we will be seeing here pair plot only for input data set it may take a while to plot this plot because pair plot is very costly plot all right so we have got a plot here and it's really very costly plot there are so many columns here one more thing we are missing here we are going to provide here a hue so i provide here a hue is equal to the y parameter and based on the y we are going to see that whether the customer has exited or not let's go ahead and run it once more time okay so it says that it is ambiguous that means it cannot see it, it cannot take there the y so what we can do there uh, we can just remove this y and then we can plot the same plot what we had earlier okay so currently we are having our plot and there we are seeing a lot of the distribution of the data and in this distribution it says that in this distribution it says that there is the estimated salary which seems like a constant and so many other parameters so the most of the parameters you see these straight line this says that these are the categorical data so it is important to understand that if we have a categorical data then we need to convert these categorical data into a proper one hot encoding so that's where we do the data pre-processing uh, for our model so we are going to now do here a data pre-processing and for data pre-processing we need here train test split and the standard scalar so i'm going to do here the data pre-processing i write there like uh, this data pre-processing and then i i'm going to just import here sklearn dot model underscore selection import train test split thereafter from sklearn dot pre-processing import standard scalar all right so necessary libraries we have just imported here let's go ahead and get the one hot encoded so why we want the data labeling because you see we have so many categorical data so for all these categorical data we need their one hot encoding so i write here x underscore one hot is equal to the pd dot get underscore damage so this is going to return us one hot encoded vector and then i say here the drop underscore first is equal to the true so that we can drop a first column of the one hot encoding to avoid any kind of the data multicollinearity once that is done now we have one hot encoded vector there and if you check that here x one hot then you will be seeing here 
all right all the one hot encoded vectors all these categorical variable like geography germany geography spain gender male all these actually uh, all these got encoded as the one hot encode one hot encoded vector thereafter we have reached so that we can do here x train and the x test is split so i write here x train underscore x test and then x train and x underscore test and then y underscore train and then y underscore test is equal to the train test is split all right so thereafter i write here x one hot and then i write here y underscore test and then here i pass here the test size and then i write here the test size is equal to the 0 0.2 and thereafter i write here these stratify so with the help of the stratify i'm going to make sure that our variable are actually getting divided properly in train set and the test set in fact this is not going to be the y test this should be the y so this y is previously we had defined that y that's the target label x1 hot is this one then thrust size is there and stratify equal to the y once all these things are done let's go ahead and just run it thereafter once you complete this we have got the train and test data there and then we are going to create here a scalar function so that we can do here uh, standardization of our data so i write here x underscore train is equal to the scalar dot fit underscore transform and this we do on the train data so that we can learn on what pattern it is going to do uh, on what pattern it is going to do the standardization then i do here x test is equal to the scalar dot transform here only and then i write here x underscore test once all these things are done thereafter we are ready to build our neural network let's go ahead and quickly build the neural network i write here build artificial neural network so to make artificial neural network you need to import here tensorflow as tf and then import thereafter you need to import the keras so the from tensorflow dot keras from tensorflow import keras and then from tensorflow dot keras import sequential api thereafter from tensorflow dot keras dot layers import flatten dense and then input layer thereafter you write here from tensorflow dot keras dot optimizers import adam so we have got all the optimizers we have got the flatten layer we have got the dense layer and the input layer once we have got all these now we are ready to make our model so we are going to make our model first of all we will start with the model equal to sequential once we write this thereafter we write here model dot add and then we need to add here input layer and for and once you add this input layer you need to also pass here the input shape all right so what's the input shape here so the input shape is going to be the x underscore train dot shape and in this i'm just gonna put there the input shape so this particular value is the input save for your neural network you just run it it says that they are total 11 feature thereafter you need to do here model dot add now you need to do here the dense layer i'm gonna add here 128 neuron in your dense layer and then the activation function i'm gonna use here relu activation function 
then I do here the model dot add and in the dense layer I write here 128 neuron once again and in the activation function I write here the relu activation function one more time thereafter I write here the model dot add and then the dense and in that I write here the one neuron we want only one neuron in the output because we are doing here binary classification only all right so for that I need to also change my activation function to sigmoid if you are using the binary classification then this last layer activation function should be the sigmoid there once all these things are done then you can print your the model summary here all right so you see in this model summary you have two dense layer in fact one inner dense layer in, in fact two dense layer these are the two dense layer this is the output layer input layer is not mentioned there and these are the total number of the parameter and these are the total number of the trainable parameter in your model once all these things are done now you are ready to train your model you simply write here model dot fit the model dot compile is still missing i think you need to write that as well here so the model dot compile so model dot compile in that in model dot compile you need to pass here the loss function so i pass here the loss function as the binary cross entropy because we are using here the binary uh, binary classification that's why i need to pass there the model dot compile loss as the binary cross entropy once that is done then you can simply use your model dot fit and x underscore train and then y underscore train and then the validation data set you can pass there as the test data set so you see you have here validation data in this validation data i'm gonna just pass our test data so i pass here x train x test and then y underscore test there once you pass all these data now you are ready to train your model so it's going to train your model it may take a little uh, a while and one more thing seems like we have missed there while uh, writing these compile we uh, while doing this fit seems like we have missed here one part which is the batch size so i write here the batch size is equal to the 32 and then the number of the epoch i also need to pass here that means how many times i i need to train our model i'm going to write here the 10 so this is going to be the 10 time it's going to train your model here it has trained it just a single time but now it's going to train it multiple times at least 10 time seems like this epoch is not valid there epochs it is actually all right perfect so it's going to run it 10 times and then finally we will be getting the accuracy in the last all right so all these things are done here these training are done and once this training is done you can simply import here scalar dot matrix import classification report with this classification report you can find out that how your model is doing so i write here y pred is equal to the model dot predict and in that i pass here the x test thereafter once this is done now y pred is going to give us the probability and if you see this y pred will be giving us the probability for each classes we are going to select here threshold of the 0 0.5 so i write it something like that it's going to give us the true and the false value and thereafter i write here as type int so whenever it is the true it's going to convert there as the one once all these things are done now we have y pred value there let's go ahead and print here the classification report so in the classification report now i get here the y test and the y pred there let's go ahead and just run it now if you run it you have got here 85 percent of the accuracy which doesn't seem bad by just keeping two hidden layer in your model you have got it here once you are done with all these things let's go ahead and save your model it's very much simple you can simply write here import pickle 
import OS and then you can see that here the model dot save and then I'm gonna just write here the churn model dot h5 once you do this thing it your model will be saved there and now we also need to save our scalar value because whatever the method you apply on the training method whatever the method you apply on the training you need to apply those during the prediction so you can save your scalar value as well so that later on you can use your scalar value there once you run it now you will be seeing that these will be stored here and this you can download it for the later purpose once you download it for later purpose then you can simply load your model somewhere else and you can start doing the prediction there all right let me show you finally how you can do the prediction suppose that you have your data x train in this x train you have here a lot of the data there and hypothetically assume that you got there one data and you want to predict on this particular data so how did you get this data you got this data after doing the after doing the scalar all right so where is the original data so original data is here one hot all right so in this one hot i write here the i log zero so you get the first first row there all right so all these you get there the first time and then i write here let's say values then you get there something like this suppose that this is the value all right and this value is corresponding to what this value is corresponding to all the columns which you are going to see here all right so all these values are corresponding to these columns which you are seeing there i'm just going to say that this is our test data and we want to do the prediction then how would you do that so for this you need to simply write here test is equal to scalar dot transform and then you need to pass it here once you once you get your test data now you can perform prediction on the test data itself all right so simply whatever we did earlier here during the prediction let me just show you here whatever the you did there you can simply perform those operations here but before that you need to do here a new y pred so there you write there the model dot predict inside that you pass there the test once that is done then you can simply print here y pred there all right so if you run it now you will be seeing there the predicted value is zero that means the customer will stay with the bank all right so you have seen a lot in this lesson like how you can predict the churn of the customer you have also seen how you can load store your model and also you have seen how you can do the prediction on your model all right in last here are some other resources which you can utilize to learn yourself and improve your uh, machine learning skills i have some courses there like the data visualization in the python master class python for machine learning python for linear regression especially all these courses are available on the udemy you will get this notebook on github download this notebook from the github and get the get these courses by yourself all right this is all about in this lesson thanks a lot for watching this